When you think about mental health, think about the way you think, the way you feel, and how you respond. That's basically what mental health is all about. Uh, but before I go on, I need to really talk about um, the use of words like killing yourself, for example. We talked about criminalizing it. Uh, when you use words like that, it almost you know, fits into that criminal nature that mm -hmm. you're doing something wrong. Well, isn't that what it is? But no, we would probably use the word um, someone attempts suicide, for example, rather than even saying someone committed suicide or someone killed themselves someone or someone died us. by suicide. Right. Okay. So you either attempt, uh, you have thoughts of suicide, or you died by suicide. Again, that helps us understand that they are victims and they are not necessarily criminals in that sense. Okay. Now, speaking of uh, why people would, you know, attempt suicide, there are many reasons. Uh, mental health concerns could be one of them. Um, another reason for me, and this is more of um, um, experiential in my practice, um, I have seen people attempt suicide and then come into therapy. You know, after a, a period of time, come back to you and actually same question which is why was I trying to end my life right I've really? seen that um, in fact there's a simple joke about the person who wanted to attempt his life went into the forest hung the tree and saw a, a python and then ran out of the oh, forest. Oh, <laughs> the python eats you and you put it's an funny, end to it it's funny but it gives us that idea that many people who attempt suicide do not do it from a conscious state or a totally um, um, deliberate state and so my theory and from this is from my experience and practice is that many people who are suicidal um, get to a point where they are stuck, right? Uh, they are stuck mentally. Now, it doesn't have to, you might be looking at it from the external perspective and say, hey, you know, you can fix this. But at that point where they are, they feel there's no way out. Now, what I also have seen in experience is that nobody wakes up one morning and just thinks of ending their life. Usually, it grows, right? So it starts with something like, why am I here? Or what can I do to fix this? Um, how do I deal with this? And then it keeps on evolving. When they can't find a way out, it keeps on evolving. What if I wasn't here? What if I could just leave this scene? And then what if I could just end my life, right? So it's usually a progression that eventually gets to the point where suicide becomes the option for that person. But we know that it's not the only option. And so our job is to help them see things from a different perspective and help them fix whatever what challenges the makes them feel are... stuck. Yes. You know, the, 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 the scary part for me is the fact that it is not just circumstantial. Mm -hmm. So people could actually be in that sphere and not even know that they have been suicidal, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Some people can. At what point does anyone rec need to begin to recognize? What are the telltale signs, subtle or prominent or pronounced, mm -hmm. that will let, make someone know, that this fellow is suicidal. Okay, so suicide can be the reason uh, re can result from many things, um, mental health concerns like depression, for example. Um, but we say that depression is not the only thing that leads to suicide. So someone can be suicidal and not be depressed, right? Mm. Um, substance use also can lead people to being suicidal. Uh, but some of the signs that yeah. you should look out for is things like uh, they begin to talk about death, for example. It's beginning to talk about how meaningless life is, you know. Mm. Or they begin to ask questions about the meaning of life. Um, in some cases, you could see some people begin to withdraw. Um, that could also give you a hint. It's not necessarily a guarantee that the person who withdraws is suicidal, but again, that's one of the signs that we see. Uh, social withdrawal, um, loss of interest in things they used to love doing before, they start to talk about it and plan about it you wow. know so they could go online and start to research oh if i were to die well how would i what's the best way what's the simplest way something yeah. like that um people do know. research such yeah things. yeah they do research that so you know i've had clients who tell me oh i've researched a thousand ways to die or you know 10 ways to die and that might there's a movie i think like that and and that would also be that person's kind of favorite movie uh, they usually are attracted to dark themes in terms of um, stories, you know, negative stories, you know, things that are not so pleasant. And if you were to look at the person's DM, for example, it would give you a hint. So either a tear, someone crying, or just a dark, you know, things like that tells us that the person is in a mentally, you know, stuck state. Hmm. Um, you know, talking about it, you know, planning about it, previous attempts as well could also be a, uh, something you look out for. If somebody has had a previous attempt before, there's a likelihood that they would um, attempt again. Um, and then the use of substance. You know, some people, when they use substances, it, it affects the cognitive reasoning, the ability to really assess things and look at things from a whole perspective. Mm. And that can predispose them. Sometimes.